All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much again for being with us today. Um, this is our civic engagement workshop on how to pass a resolution. And my name is Aliza Cosme. I'm the advocacy manager at CARE San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm gonna invite just our staff to also uh, verbally introduce themselves, starting with Hanya. Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Hanya and I'm an intern this summer with CARE, the government relations intern. Um, I go to school in the Bay Area and I'll go ahead and pass it off to Samina. Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Samina Usman. I'm the senior government relations coordinator uh, for the office. And uh, I think you were saying cities, Santa Clara, and um, your favorite thing to do? Or no, is that just in the chat? <laughs> All right, I'll pass it on to Mohammed. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Mohammed. I'm the community engagement coordinator for CARE SFBA and I'm super excited to be here today. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Uh, we have such an awesome team, Mashallah, and you know they work so hard in general and I know that they've been working really hard um, in preparation for today. So uh, really a huge shout out to them all. Um, and thanks everybody for starting to introduce yourself in the chat again with your name, your city and your favorite thing about summer. It's great to see everyone and uh, meet some new people. Um, and I just want to do a quick land acknowledgement to acknowledge that we are on unceded Ohlone land. Um, and you know we wanna recognize the ongoing legacy of settler colonialism both here and across the world um, and extend our respects to the Ohlone people. And I also want to acknowledge our partners who have really helped us um, you know, spread the word about today and are just in general really great um, collaborators, which include Stanford Muslim Student Union, ICNA Council for Social Justice, the SF Bay Area Chapter, Lighthouse Mosque and um, MCC East Bay. I see we have Brother Munir here, thank you. Uh, and also the Town Hall Alliance. Um, so with that, I um, wanna go ahead and conduct a quick poll as we get started because we really wanna make sure that um, we are tailoring our workshops to kind of where the community is at. And Alhamdulillah, we have such a diverse, you know, community and everybody has different rich experiences. Um, so this is just a question to kind of gauge for the people who are in our um, audience today, and it's totally anonymous, so please be honest. Um, how confident are you in bringing people together to shed light on and build solidarity around a cause that's important to you? So you can interpret it you know, however you want and um, just share, share what you think on a scale of one to five. One being least confident um, and five being most confident. Sorry, I should have clarified that. So one, you're kind of like, I'm new, I'm, I'm learning. And five, you feel really confident. Give that another second. Okay, thank you for that. And um, we will keep that in mind with, uh, with the rest of our time together. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Hania to go over the goals for today, thank you. Yeah, um, so again, thanks all for coming today. Um, we hope that by the end of this workshop, everyone here will be able to identify kind of what purpose resolutions have and what role they can play when we're thinking about political organizing in our communities. And that comes along with kind of understanding how we get resolutions passed. Um, and we're gonna kind of end today thinking about uh, ways to strengthen current resolutions or think up new ones in our communities. So just keep in mind that today is supposed to be a broad overview, but we will be sending out the slides and a recording along with a guide and sample language for a proclamation afterwards. And if you have any questions or comments as we go through this presentation, please feel free to use the chat. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Samina. Thank you so much, Hania. Um, so yeah, so what is a resolution? A resolution is basically an acknowledgement, whether it be by um, a government entity, like a city council or a um, the state of California or county board of supervisors um, that acknowledges or celebrates a, an, an important event or an issue or a position. Um, alternatively, your local government might call it a proclamation. Um, and so, what what does a resolution do? It basically it increases 
public awareness um, of the community or an event being celebrated or highlighted. It motivates elected officials to be better allies by putting the event and related issues at the forefront of their minds. I think that this is actually really key because oftentimes, you know, people, I mean, like, like, look, we, I'm going to give an example. Um, you have uh, the Muslim community in Santa Clara. Santa Clara has the largest mosque in California, um, at, and that's the MCA. Um, and so, it, when you have passed these type of resolutions, like maybe acknowledging if there's a particular date or a particular like how many years that MCA has been an in institution, it reminds the elected officials, hey, look, we've got a sizable Muslim community right here in your city. And it gets them to think of ways of how to incorporate them into um, other areas as well. Um, it also um, will motivate elected officials to who are in higher bodies like to pass things in, in their jurisdiction as well. So you might have a city council or you might have another entity passing a resolution about a federal issue. And um, that encourages congressional members to vote in a particular way. Um, sorry, my cat is about to close my computer. Um, forgive me. <laughs> and um, and I think one one other added benefit is that it creates the opportunities for um, community members and community organizations to to get together to become better allies with each other. Um, so let me give you an example of a few uh, resolutions that have been passed in the Bay Area. And so, and a number of you might have worked on these uh, particular resolutions. So um, one of them was that Alameda, Alameda County and also actually San Francisco County had passed a resolution um, with the South Asian community to condemn um, Modi's Citizens Amendment Act and also the National Population Register and the National Register of Citizens in India, which, you know, all of these these issues, these uh, these um, amendments that were passed, they were discriminatory against Muslims or caste oppressed minorities, um, women, indigenous peoples, um, and, and other vulnerable populations who were to become stateless or uh, scapegoated or targeted for discrimination. And so um, to have Alameda County pass um, this type of resolution in solidarity with the South Asian community, saying that they are condemning these type of um, the, 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 these type of amendments that were passed, it, it collectively, if you have enough cities that do that, it really sends a strong message to India um, and, and the Indian government that says, hey, look, this is not acceptable. Um, and indeed, they, they did hear from the Indian government about this. So, uh, so they're paying attention. <laughs> um, I'll give you another uh, uh, issue that was, that was uh, introduced or that was considered by the Santa Clara County Human Rights Commission. Um, and what I find very interesting about this resolution is that you had the NAACP who brought up, um, who introduced this resolution against caste-based discrimination. And so you might be familiar that, um, especially like in the Bay Area, there have been um, companies that have been accused of discrimination based on a person's caste. And so it's, um, um, what I find, so what they're saying is that, um, we need to factor in uh, caste and and have that as a protected class so that um, people will not just be protected based on their um, ethnicity or based on their religion. They're also protected based on their caste as well. And so um, what, what I found interesting is that you had a number of organizations, a number of community members from all different backgrounds coming together um, to speak in support of this resolution. You had about, well, a total of 500 people who, spoke, who attended this hearing. You had about 290 people who spoke about this issue, um, with 60% of them being in favor of having caste as a protected class. Um, so I just found this as an incredible way to bring together communities of different backgrounds, um, of different religions, of you know, of, with different issues, but coming together to speak in solidarity about this. I thought that that was uh, incredible. And and another resolution um, that was. Actually, there are multiple resolutions that were passed by a number of uh, Democratic Central Committee um, groups 
um, in, in support of H.R. 2590, which is the Palestinian Children and Families Act. Again, uh, we, we're 501c3. We can't be in, we're not in speaking in support of any particular political party. But what we're saying is that um, I, I found this um, very powerful that you had a number of um, uh, Democratic clubs that were uh, speaking out, that had their, their members um, vote in favor of these resolutions that supported HR 2590. Um, and if you have enough jurisdictions that support this particular issue, it definitely sends a strong message to congressional members who are um, responsible for voting on this particular bill. Um, so I, I, it's very powerful. It's a way that um, other community members can also weigh in and have power in, in weighing in on this type of issue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Mohammed to, ex oh, actually, sorry, not yet. Um, <laughs> let me give you another example of different pro um, proclamations, and that's the Muslim Appreciation and Awareness Month. Um, it uh, initially got passed um, by the California State Assembly. Um, it was introduced by Assemblymember Bill Quirk. Um, he had worked with a community member who is Sister Moina Sheikh, um, who had worked with the assembly member um, to, to encourage him to introduce this resolution. Um, she had reached out to CARE um, for help with the language, um, but we were able to get this resolution passed in 2016. And uh, this is our, our sixth year uh, of having this uh, resolution going. Now, um, you know, what was going on in 2016? That was, um, you know, the, the presidential election where you had then candidate Donald Trump um, saying that he wanted to have a total and complete shutdown um, so that, you know, to prevent Muslims from entering the U.S. It was a very politically charged environment, still is. And, um, but to have uh, an assembly member um, want to introduce something in support of the Muslim community, it was incredibly powerful at that time. And, and by the way, he received death threats for doing so. Um, so, you know, it, it shows like how powerful this type of a resolution is. Now, uh, thereafter, um, we had um, then city council member, San Jose city council member, Ash Kalra, he saw this resolution. He's like, hey, I want to amplify this in the city of San Jose. I want to pass this over here too. And so at the very end of the month, we were able to get a resolution um, or proclamation passed in support of uh, the state designation of August being um, Muslim Appreciation and Awareness Month. And that started um, us thinking, hey, look, let's reach out to other city councils and other jurisdictions to see um, if they can support um, this resolution. And it's been passed in about 18 different uh, cities and um, counties. And, and also we had uh, the Santa Clara Unified School District that also passed a resolution in support of this month. Um, and, and multiple cities have passed it numerous times uh, since then. And so it, it sends a powerful message uh, that these cities are in support of their Muslim constituents, that they recognize what these Muslim constituents bring to the table, what how they have um, uh, Im improved and have been um, part of the community, and also recognize the history of the community. And so what we try to do with each of these cities is we amplify um, some you know special things about these uh, particular um, cities or uh, the, the Muslim communities in these cities and the organizations as well. I think one notable organization I'm going to mention is Support Life Foundation um, that I always that I try to mention in um, uh, you know a number of the proclamations for the uh, amount of food that they've distributed uh, to community members um, across the Bay Area. Um, I, I can't remember the, the number right now, but like I, I don't know how many tons of food that has been distributed just in Santa Clara County alone because um, you know due to the pandemic. Um, we want to make sure that these organizations are amplified um, and their good work is amplified 
uh, because, you know, I mean, uh, you know, mashallah, I mean, it's, it's incredible and we should celebrate that as well. We should celebrate these groups for being part of um, the Bay Area, being part of the community. And so, um, it, and, and, you know, this is an important way to also recognize certain people. Like the statewide um, designation recognize a, a number of uh, scientists or elected officials or um um, judges or, or key notable people um, that lived in the, that live in the state of California um, in their resolution. So this is a, a great way um, to, to do that. So uh, we can go more into the Muslim Appreciation Month proclamation. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Muhammad, who's going to talk about how to pass a resolution. Uh, thank you, Samina, for all this information. Um, so I'm going to talk about the few steps that we should take before getting a resolution started working on a resolution when you do start working on one. Uh, the first thing is to always uh, form a committee, ask your friends, ask local community leaders, community activists, and just always remember if you are doing a resolution and trying to get a resolution passed on an for an impacted community, make sure they are involved in the process early on. Make sure that once language is being drafted, they, they are involved before that because we don't want to speak for people. We just want to amplify the voices of the uh, marginalized communities we are advocating for. Um, so firstly, so I would give you an example. If I am trying to get a resolution passed in Fremont and I know that there's community leaders that I am in contact with that have good relationships with the local city office, I would get them involved. I would get uh, an advocacy organization or local a few local activists involved who who are experts on the issue to make sure that the language and the process we are doing it from is uh, good. This really brings out the self-accountability. When the group is a little bigger, it, it makes sure that you are not overlooking something major because language makes a difference at the end of the day. So you want to make sure that we are using the right language and we are we were doing it with the support of the broader community uh, and just not by something on your own because very often you end up uh, losing track. The second thing is when you are, um, so the second step would be starting to draft the resolution. Uh, very often um, the resolutions you are trying to uh, pass, there's uh, language available on it on, on the internet. Uh, if if it's HR 2590, uh, there's local resolutions in support of it already. So you don't have to go through the process of uh, redoing the whole language. Uh, you just got to make sure that it fits and it's updated. Uh, same with Muslim Appreciation Month, the language is out there. So when you are drafting this language, use that as a reference, use this as a, as a guide. But also, um, I also want to amplify, like Samina mentioned, that amplifying other organizers uh, organizations, masajids, local uh, uh, community groups. So when you are uh, in this process of um, drafting it at the end, uh, it would be nice to recognize a local mosque, a local nonprofit that has done uh, work in a particular area. Uh, in Ramazan, in uh, last year's Ramazan resolutions that Samina worked on, we saw local uh, MSAs get uh, recognition too for their work. So I think it's a very important to build the community's confidence that their work is seen and um, and inshallah that it it will amplify it will be amplified and recognized uh, by the broader community uh, because very often in our communities some of the most vibrant community leaders are somebody someone that like outside the community haven't interacted with because they've been so busy uh, serving the community. So after you have your committee, you have your uh, sample language, uh, you want to reach out to uh, elected officials. Um, if you don't have a contact with a local city, uh, uh, city council, school board, or even student government, um, email the executive branch and ask them for, hey, uh, we, are, uh, we want to get this proclamation or resolution passed, um, and uh, would you be willing to do it for you? Another approach would be uh, if you know in your group or in your community, there's an ally, there's somebody, uh, one city council that has amplified um, work of Muslim community uh, and supported them uh, throughout his um, tenure. Uh, you wanna make sure you reach out to them and you're like, hey, we're 
introducing this uh, proclamation. Can you please, uh, can you please um, spot, uh, can you, sorry, can you please introduce it? Um, and nine out of 10, most of the time, they'd be more than happy to do it. You would also want to make sure you did the research on uh, their track record. You want to make sure that like, um, you're not reaching out to somebody that has a track record of opposing your community, of um, passing bills or resolutions, or just uh, putting out statements that has impacted the community at, um, that is uh, you're trying to advocate for in this proclamation. And once you do all that, find yourself a sponsor and the sponsor starts championing in it. It's important to you know rally the community, make sure community is there when this proclamation is presented and passed to show that our community is very vibrant. It is something, uh, our community has people from all uh, races, ethnicities, cultures, um, and even employment. Like our community is not just X, Y, Z. Uh, it, it falls ac across the spectrum of um, diversity. And hopefully by now, um, your resolution should be passed. Um, yeah, I think I'm going back to Samina for this. Yes, thank you so much, Mohammed. Um, I, I think you, you brought us some important points about making sure that different community members are, or, or that we've reached out to, to different groups, especially if they are the impacted community groups. I think that's first and foremost uh, in order to um, build your, your committee in order to then you know draft a resolution that's really reflective of the issue, reflective of the community. Um, and so, and then, and then, of course, to reach out to those elected officials and find, um, um, and and it goes back to uh, building those relationships with those elected officials, and um, and of course, celebrating together is is very important too. Um, and and letting getting the word out, letting people know that this uh, indeed happened. Um, so uh, here's some general tips in terms of how to draft a resolution. Um, Oftentimes, it's, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to write your resolution from scratch. You can look and see other resolutions that have like similar content um, that have been passed in other cities or other jurisdictions. And um, you can um, just modify the language to, to suit your issue or your need. Um, you can also um, look at... Um, even if if the issues are not even related at all, you can see okay, hey, like this issue is somewhat similar. You know, maybe we can um, incorporate that type of language or into your own resolution. Um, another thing is again building relationships with your elected officials uh, prior to asking if they can introduce a resolution. Um, you'll get a lot more attraction if you have those relationships already. Um, but again, it's not just about trying to get something out of the elected official and that's why you're building that relationship. I mean, I think it's just important to um, know what's happening in your city, to be involved in your city, to see how you can be an asset as well. Um, but it's it's it really is key to have those relationships with elected. But again, it's not um, absolutely necessary either. Even if you cold call an elected official and be like, hey, you know, I'm so and so. I live in this city, which has a sizable Muslim community, and we have a mosque over here, and we'd really love to amplify um, their efforts, especially around COVID relief or you know whatever whatever you want to say. Um, you don't necessarily have to have that relationship, but it just really helps you a lot. Now. Um, you know, it's important to um, spread the word about the proclamation or the resolution prior to uh, the introduction of it, because you're going to need to have community members come out and speak in support of it, um, especially if it's a contested issue, such as the one that the NAACP had introduced or about the caste based system. I mean, to have, you know, 290 people speaking in support or against this particular uh, resolution, um, you know, you need to have enough people on both sides or, you know, hopefully on our side um, to be speaking on that issue, because that will influence uh, the elected body on whether or not they are going to be supporting um, or rejecting this particular resolution. Um, and then um, and then again, you know, what's that saying? If a tree falls in the woods, in the woods, did it fall? I don't know. If, you, if people don't know about your resolution, then, you know, it, it it's not going to make as much of an impact. 
So it's important to let people know about these particular resolutions, whether it be through social media, whether it be, be through press releases. Um, it's just important for people to, to know about it. Um, and again, going back to the issue about st finding strength in community partnerships, that's incredibly key. Um, it's, it's not just about... Um, you know, relying or reaching out to those who you usually reach out to. It's important to reach out to a variety of groups. Um, we try to, like, let's, let me go back to the Muslim Appreciation Month proclamations. We try to reach out to um, a number of mosques, not just only one or two mosques um, that are in the area when we're trying to, to um, introduce this resolution um, or this proclamation. And same thing with other issues, such as like the, the, the um, issue about caste-based system. I mean, I, I was uh, just in awe of the groundwork that was done by the organizers to reach out to a variety of groups that didn't necessarily have even a South Asian background or whatnot, but they came out and spoke in solidarity. Um, and that's where you build that community power. But I think where you build that community power isn't just about asking people to join and speak out about your issues. It's also about you coming out and speaking about their issues as well. You know, So I have gone to a number of city council meetings to speak in support of um, protections for those who are undocumented uh, to make sure that you know we we stop API hate um, to, you know, to speak on a variety of different topics in order to show that we are true allies to them. And that's how it builds um, that allyship with other communities as well. So then they'll come out and speak um, um, for you as well. But again, it's not about just building those relationships so that we can hopefully get something in return. It's just about doing the right thing and just being a good person <laughs> and speaking in favor and speaking in support of, of different issues. Um, and then just, you know, remember that this proclamation or this resolution doesn't just have to stop right at that city. It's a, it's a way to, to jump off, to, to create more concrete things, um, to be able to create either, you know, ordinances that have like that that are um, have um, a, a change in the law. Um, it can also help to influence um, higher higher offices and and higher positions, such as um, like in Congress, uh, a vote that way. So if you have enough local bodies that are pushing for an issue, it is more um, more of a chance of you getting something passed in a, a bigger body as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Elisa. Great, thank you all so much, um, Samina, Mohammed, and Hania. What awesome insights on how this tactic really is. There's a lot more to it, right, than you might think um, at first glance. And it's a really great awareness builder. And, you know, it's a really great way to also just build power in the community. Um, and now we want to actually have some discussion with you all. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to stop the, the recording for a minute. One thing I want to do is invite Brother Sayed as we get ready to close out. Um, I think you have a quick announcement. And um, as he gets ready to make that announcement, I'm going to go ahead and do our poll again. Uh, let's see. Can I do this correctly? Uh all right, so um, now that we've kind of had our uh, presentation and discussion, uh, we'd love to see how people feel, um, if there's been any change on a scale of one to five, one being least confident and five being most confident, how you feel about uh, working to bring people together around a common cause. So let's take a few seconds and everybody can answer again. And then we'll share the results. And then I'm going to hand it over to Brother Sayed for a second to make his announcement. All right. So um, great. So thank you for your feedback. Thank you so much again for your participation. Uh, and Brother Sayed, did you want to go ahead? JazakAllah khair. Um, so just quickly. Uh um, I uh, am the lead for ICNA CSJ Beria chapter. And uh, if uh, anybody's unfamiliar with uh, ICNA uh, Council for Social Justice, we are a social justice organization as uh, our name says. Uh, our focus areas are global injustice, hunger, poverty, inequality, Islamophobia, and just uh, immigration policies and Muslim prisoner support project. Um, 
as part of our uh, global injustice uh, focus area, we're planning to launch a competition uh, by next week. Uh, that competition will be attracting uh, creative works from uh, mainly uh, high schoolers and college students uh, in uh, commemoration of the world's uh, ind indigenous uh, day. I, I think it's called International Day of World's Indigenous People. So the focus of that competition will be um, Kashmir and Palestine, as well as the indigenous population, uh, especially the local Ohlone and other uh, tribal population. So uh, we want to see some creative works there. Uh, the, the submissions will be due around uh, August 7th. And then August 14th, we are going to have an in-person event, uh, which is quite bold, I guess, uh, these days. Uh, but it will be hopefully in a park in an open uh, open air type setting uh, where we're planning to announce the winners of this competition as well as some educational uh, events around uh, some of these issues that are that are happening. So would love everybody here to participate in the competition and uh, in the event itself. And I am um, happy to answer any questions and would love it if you guys can share it. With uh, with your friends, families, and uh, your your circle. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Lisa. It took a little bit longer. Did like a lot of All right. Um, so we can go ahead and go through some resources. Um, we just wanted to like uplift these links and uh, documents as y'all take on these really exciting projects. So. Uh, we've listed a website here, usa.gov slash elected hyphen officials. Um, if you go on that website, you can find the contact information for your elected officials. So, you know, as you think about finding a champion in your local government, definitely please use that resource uh, to identify folks. And if you still can't find um, anyone, then you can email Samina and her email is also listed there for reference. I will pass it off. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Hania. Um, we have an exciting um, month coming up. August uh, is Muslim Appreciation Month, and we have a lot of planning and a lot of events coming up. One of the things we are going to do, firstly, we are sending you a paper guide with the text for proclamations that you can work on locally in your towns. And even though it's something that's tailored to California, the principles could be applied in any states and uh, for a reference could be used anywhere. Uh, so please, if you know somebody who would be a great fit to lead local efforts, make sure you, uh, you know, direct them towards our um, page for Muslim Appreciation Month. Um, link, I have just chatted with you. We're also doing um, a campaign. Uh, Muslims in the Bay Area have been here for a really long time, and we have, over the past year, seen activists, organizers, community leaders, students, just, you know, when things got tough, we got out. Food drives, protests, uh, local advocacy efforts. We saw artists present art that really, you know, gave um, a better understanding of what, uh, what was going on locally. So we want to recognize these folks. So uh, we are, um, if you go on our bit.ly, which I'll be set, setting up, feel free to nominate um, your friends, your families, your colleagues who have done work that should get a shout out. And inshallah, we'll have a celebration for them and recognize them for their work and their, con their continuous uh, commitment to social justice uh, and leadership uh, locally. So, yeah, and in the meantime, if you have any questions um, or you get a resolution passed, we would love to hear that from you. You can reach me out on my, uh, on my email at mckander at care.com. Oh, and please share pictures. Uh, we love seeing pictures and we would love to amplify them, um, amplify them on our social media as well. Um, yep. All right, thanks so much everyone again for attending. Um, I'm really excited to see what, like where everyone's efforts go in the future.
um, please, please stay in touch with us about your progress with campaigns and uh, any like resolutions you're trying to get passed through social media and we've shared emails as well. Um, feel free to sign up to volunteer as well if you're interested in kind of engaging with our work and continue to engage with future workshops. Um, if everyone could take a moment now to kind of just share one word or a few, like a short phrase about how they're feeling right now after this workshop, that would be great. And I can, I can start, uh, feel free to use the chat or just speak out and we can popcorn it. Um, so I am feeling energized and excited and I can popcorn to um, a singer. Thank you. I am empowered. So I will pass it on. Do I have to pick someone? Aliza. I am hopeful. And I'll pass it to Abdullah. Um, I feel I feel I feel like I can't do it in one word, like. Like I learned a lot. Like I can't wait to kind of you know just go into do action and stuff now. Yeah, I'm really young and I feel like this really helps me get my voice heard and stuff. So thank you. And anyone else who wants to say what uh, what their word is or phrase is, just go ahead and and, and say it or chat it. So we're seeing confident, optimistic, ambitious, motivated. Anyone else? Awesome. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone's on the same page. Everyone's feeling good, and uh, sounds like you know we have some plans in the works. So again, thank you so much, everybody. Like Hania said, um, on behalf of our entire team and uh, looking forward to following up with you all. Thanks everyone, have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you.